Hello, and welcome back to something a little different. If you've been following along, you'll know that I have been working on a series I call 20 Games in 30 Days, and I recently hit a milestone with that. Uh, no, not that milestone, although that is also exciting. I finished my first set of games. So I decided that I would do a few sets of games during this. So instead of just doing 20 random games, I put them into a few categories. And the first set I finished was the arcade era of games. I took six games from the arcade. I spent some time looking into the history of them, how they were made, what they meant to video games as a whole. And then I made these games for myself in 24 or 48 hours. I have done some game jams in the past. I have made some games in the past. And this is a very different experience than both. The one thing that is missing in this is the art of design and creating something new from scratch and game jams really help with that. The thing that game jams don't show you is how you're doing on an objective standard. You have ratings at the end and you can maybe learn that my game was better or worse than other people's games, but at the end of the day I'm creating something out of my head and I might be really good at creating games but really bad at coming up with my ideas and it's hard to differentiate am I lacking the technical skill or the design ability. So for this challenge I am creating games that have already been made. It is very easy to measure on an objective scale. Is Pac-Man Pac-Man or did I fail to create that? Does Pong have two paddles and a ball and a score and can you bounce back and forth? And am I making this game to the spec that it was originally designed to? It's a very clear uh, binary standard, which is great. And I've loved having that standard and being able to measure myself against that as I'm developing these games. I wanted to look through some of these games and answer the question, did I learn anything? The first game was Pong. And I made this one entirely from primitives and colliders, though there was no art whatsoever and there was sound effects I found online. So very simple, very easy to enter in. And the funny thing is I still found a bug in the game engine and I still made a mistake that cost me an hour, a bad assumption that I had to figure out how to identify and correct. And so it was funny that even in this extremely easy first game, the video is still an hour long, which also is partially me not knowing how to make videos. That was my first one ever. Another part of this challenge for me is making a video about each game. I want to be able to do devlogs in the future, and this sounds like a great way to learn. So I spent three hours on the game and six weeks on the video. <laughs> And there was probably a lesson there as well of learning your tools. It takes time. And if you don't know anything about a topic, it is really hard to estimate how long it's going to take. I did not think that that would be a six week process of making the video. A breakout was built right on top of Pong. It was kind of just the same thing, but more of it. Having made a game before makes it easier to make another one. Like the more games you make, the easier it is to make games. And that might seem obvious, but a lot of people try to make one big game when they first start out and then they get tired and they make a mess and they give up and they stop making games. And so I find that the approach I'm taking is actually very rare. And from what I've seen, it is absolutely an approach I would recommend because I make a mess of the code base and then I'm done and I start a new one and I can choose to import elements. I took the paddle from Pong and put it in Breakout and I took the paddle from Breakout and put it in Space Invaders and modified it to be a ship. But after those three games, I threw everything away and started Asteroids from scratch. So having that freedom is really nice of being able to say, I am here to make something and if I have a tool I've already made I can reuse that tool. If the things I've done before are terrible I don't have to reuse it and I get to experience the joy of having finished something multiple times and also have an objective standard to measure it against which is really cool and something that I don't think I really see other solutions for other than following a tutorial which obviously provides the temptation to just cheat and copy paste or do a lot of that. Um, I actually have a video talking about my experience dealing with some of those problems. So this is 
I'm trying to not tell my story because I told it in that video, but I've run into that issue before. And a part of this challenge is I don't look at tutorials. I ask questions online, Stack Overflow and whatever, but it's always very specific questions of, I think I know what I want to do, how do I do it specifically, as opposed to, how do I make a game? Um, I find that that's not a great way to learn, at least for me. Uh, Space Invaders, I didn't actually finish. That was a two-day project, and I learned to make sprite work for the very first time. And I spent so much time on that sprite work that I never got it animated, which was something I had originally planned on doing for that game. So that was the first game I didn't strictly finish, and again, measuring by an objective standard, I can say that I failed. It's not just a feeling, it's this was supposed to be in the game and it wasn't. But even so, I finished a game that looks and plays like Space Invaders, minus the animation, and it's got scores and all the things and it works, and I am still happy with it. And I actually had the opportunity, two games later, to redeem myself when I made Frogger and got to put in the animation. It felt amazing to succeed where I had failed. In between those two was Asteroids, which was a complete from scratch game. So I had recycled code and assets between Pong, Breakout, Space Invaders, and then I threw it all away and Asteroids was from scratch. I had limitations. I did not use any art. I only used a line renderer built in to Godot. Using those tools and having those restrictions, it became an amazing game. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. In modern game development, you can do anything you want. The only, the only limiting factor is time. Because of that, a lot of things that I've seen just feel like they were made using the modern tools and no creativity. Hey, I can throw assets in a world that have a person walking. Leading into restrictions can often lead to a way cooler and way better experience. And yeah, my final game was Pac-Man, which is kind of a bit of a capstone here. It was the final one in this series, and it was my first AI. It turns out those are not that difficult. Creating an AI is essentially the same thing as writing any other code. It's just you often have a lot more of it. I did make a mess. It's my least favorite code base so far, but I now know that I can do it and I just need to be more organized next time. And again, that's a benefit of doing things this way is I don't have to touch that code ever again. I finished the game and my next game, I can take the lessons I learned without taking the mess I made and move it forward. Probably goes without saying at this point, would I recommend doing this challenge for anyone else who's starting out in game design? And the answer, everything I've said is yes. <laughs> I think that if you are new to games and you would like to start and you want to be successful, I don't think that creating your dream game is the way to go right off the bat. I do have a design notebook that I'm continuing to fill as I progress because I have a specific game I want to make when this is all done. And I actually do have two of my games throughout the series are going to be my own ideas, but the majority of the games I'm making are somebody else's games because there's a way that I can measure my success and I can see myself growing. And yeah, so this was a shorter video, but I wanted to share that and show off what I've done in a little different way. There is a full playlist if you want to watch the, um, you know, 30 minute to an hour videos of each of these games. But here is just a quick recap of what I did and how, how it turned out and whether I'd recommend it. So um, thank you so much and I will see you next time.